I'm also a chef. Oh yeah, he is. He's the You're chef. He's the Nyamachoma chief. Yes. The moment you walk into this door, you are entering Uganda. And in Uganda, this is how we do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Jan, of course. And today I'm bringing to you a bit of a chill video with Mr. Muchini here. So I feel like you have seen a lot of him in my voiceovers, making a lot of kind of surface level comments that have made you guys laugh so much. But today we are gonna be delving deeper into who Mr. Muchini really is. I know you guys really look forward to having him in my videos. So yeah, today we're gonna be having a little chit chat with you. Dad, how do you feel about that? Excited. Excited. To be with you again. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you back. Thank okay. you. It's gonna be a bit of like, meet my dad slash dad tag, like get to know him. And also, oh yeah, I've had a few people comment on our relationship, like our father's daughter relationship. So yeah, we're gonna be touching a bit about upon that and also what it's like for him being a Ugandan dad in the UK. So if you like the sound of that, stay tuned and let's get straight into it. So dad, you were born in Uganda, right? Correct. Where in Uganda were you born? I was actually born in um, the World District. Really? In a hospital called Kasala. Really? I don't know if so many of you know uh, where Kasala is. It was a Catholic hospital. Mm -hmm. That's where I was born. Wow. This is news to me. I'm not going to lie. I didn't know that. Okay. And actually, a question that maybe a lot of um, people might want to know like, how are you so funny? And also, I want to know why didn't I get that trait? I don't know if I'm funny. I'm just trying to be myself. Aww. That is exactly how I see things. That's how I see life. Mm. And that is me, no pretense. <laughs> I'm sure you've got a bit of that in, in you. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Something that you don't realize. Um, okay, so this is a bit of a very vast question, but what was your best childhood memory? Oh, you see, the thing is, unlike you, my kids, myself, I come from a humble background. And what I really enjoyed as a child wasn't going to Disneyland, like I've taken you a lot to go in California, Pali, <laughs> none of that. Mine was a holiday time getting on the bus and heading to the village. Okay. Just imagine going to see grandma, lots of fruits, lots of food everywhere. <laughs> and you can't beat that. You can't beat that. Okay, so, all right, interesting. Right, so how old were you when you moved over to the UK? I moved over to the UK at a very old age, I wouldn't say tender, it was a very old age of 19 years. Old? <laughs> <laughs> so me at 21, what am I? <laughs> tender age of 19. <laughs> okay. I, I was coming to 20. Right. Yeah, very close to 20 I was. And how was that transition for you? From Uganda life to new life here in the UK? Back in the 90s? Back in the 90s, yeah. yeah. I really enjoyed it. Um, first of all, I started independence, if you understand, at a very early age. And like I was my own boss mm. at 19 years, mm. deciding what I'm going to do. Oh, I loved it. I enjoyed it. I can imagine. Yeah. Sounds good. Cool. Um, so, moving on a bit from after you got here, um, of course you met mum and then I came along but my question is uh, what was your reaction in 1997 when you found out that mum was pregnant with me and you have to be honest I was very excited really I knew I was having another addition like uh, starting a family but the only problem is um, I was doing my final year at uni Mm. So, I kind of had my hands full 
but that was like the final year of my university mm. and we we're both excited because we we're still young and like uh, just imagine having another life to look after were you not a bit scared or a bit like worried about the future or a bit stressed i wouldn't say that no i knew i was like coming out of uni and it was very busy in the industry which had uh, which I was going to start working in and I thought yes this is the time okay yes nice all right mm. I get a few comments from people talking about like our sort of father-daughter relationship how do you think that has evolved over the years as I've kind of grown throughout childhood and up to now into adulthood the relationship like a, basically the state the different stages we've been having different relationships now at this stage where we are now we are like a more of friends <laughs> because i think there isn't much i'm teach i'm passing on to you in terms of teaching mm. i think i've done all the teaching like uh, in all those previous years mm. and uh, now i'm happy to leave you do things you want to do advise me uh, seek your opinion yeah i think that's the relationship at the moment at the moment okay. yes okay so one thing i would like to talk about is obviously when i was running for miss uganda uk you didn't like that at first and um you did try to talk me out of it kind of i would say so what are your thoughts um now with hindsight the fact that i was in a beauty pageant and how have your thoughts kind of changed from when i first told you about it to now um you see then before you started going into that beauty kind of thing mm -hmm. i wanted you to remain private i wanted you to develop into an adult i thought by i was already 19 I know you were, but... The same age you became your own boss. I know, but you're my <laughs> child, remember? <laughs> I still see you as my baby. Mm. And I kind of thought, no, 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 she's not ready. She's not ready. But then when we kind of talked about it, I said, okay, let her have the experience, like which is going to help her develop into a responsible adult. Mm. And I must say, a lot of um, opportunities have opened up for you. I know you've made a lot of friends since, and like uh, you've gained a lot of confidence, which is really very good. I'm sure you're going to be a very responsible citizen. And we, so you getting yourself into that competition gave you a lot of confidence. I remember when I was sat sitting there in the hall, I was thinking, okay, wow, she's doing fine. <laughs> she's approaching the questions right. <laughs> yeah, I was really excited on the day. Oh, that's cute. Thank you. Mm. And um, just off the back of that, so one thing I'm really grateful for as well is that you have been um, really supportive of me in terms of everything that I do even outside uh, of my education. So for example, YouTube, you've come onto my channel and you've literally made my channel blow up and <laughs> yeah, you're just really supportive in the things that I do, especially on my creative journey. Um, so what are your thoughts on me doing YouTube, social media and all of these things that um, are really out there? You see, what it is like you said, like I told you at the beginning of this, I come from a humble background personally. And um, to me, I think I've done the walking, I've done the running, and it's for you to fly. So I'll let you fly because I think I've done the walking and the running. So mm. Rosa Parks sat so Martin could walk, mm. so Obama could run, so that we could fly. Bang on, straight on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. So right. What's it like for you being a Ugandan parent in the UK? Let's go there. Um, being a Ugandan parent in the UK is a big task, it is, mm. and I must say I've been a very successful dad. 
have to say this because um, all right blow your own trumpet then. yes I've got to. <laughs> because i was able to adjust like to kind of move away from what a ugandan dad will expect from the kids as much as still maintaining the core issues which i think we have to stick to like what are those like the discipline mm. yeah, you know like when you walk into mayfield door that's our that's our house name mayfield. yeah mm. the, the discipline is different what i expect of you is different no matter what your teachers say about the social workers and all that the moment you walk into this door you are entering uganda and in uganda this is how we do it mm -hmm. this is how we do it i think uh, you're a very good example uh, your brothers are also very good examples mm -hmm. and fingers crossed the people see you the same way mm -hmm. yeah okay and yeah uh, again off the back of that question is one kuzotia like culture other parents or maybe future parents who like ugandans who will be looking to raise their kids here in the uk what did you do right that they can maybe learn from um, because a lot of people uh they say to me hey, like your parents like they raised you very well so what would you say that you did right and what advice can you give to parents young parents uh, you see basically what it is when you go when you're like um, looking after kids you just have to remember that you've got an obligation you've got a job at your hands you don't have to go with the opinion of others you just have to do uh, what is right so basically with my kids when they go out of this house I want them to print what is a true reflection of what I am. So what I did all along is to instill in you the values which I wanted people to see in you. Mm -hmm. And to me, people can have their opinion of how things can be done, but the back stops with me I, in terms of um, what the kids do what the, how the kids behave themselves mm -hmm. so the only thing i want any of my kids to do is to say i didn't listen to that mm -hmm. i don't want anybody any of you to say daddy didn't tell me you know i've been telling you these things yeah oh my god you can only say i didn't listen to that mm -hmm. but you can't say i didn't tell you Growing up as a teenager, literally almost like every week, my dad would give me a three hour lecture, like literally sit me down for three hours non-stop, like literally just lecturing me and lecturing me about different things about life, um, disciplining me and all like, yeah, just, just giving me all these life lessons, which I must say at the time were a bit of a drag and things that um, I was like, do I have to be here right now listening to this? But uh, with hindsight, they did contain a lot of useful information. I think that have helped to shape me into the person I am today. Okay, so that vindicates me. <laughs> True? <laughs> Essentially. Yes. Essentially. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So we've come on to our last question. Look at that. That went quick, didn't it? Um, so what are your hopes for me in the future? As a dad. Me as a dad. For me, as a daughter. Oh, okay. First of all, um, I want to be seated in my retirement crib knowing that you are not going to come back to my house and say, Oh, dad, I can't pay the bills. Mm -hmm. Oh, dad, this and that, can I have a loan? Uh, I wouldn't mind giving you a loan. I wouldn't mind looking after you. But basically, the way um, I've been bringing you lot up is um, I want you to be independent. Mm -hmm. I want you to develop further than me. I want you to be more successful than me. And like, uh, basically, 
I don't want you to be like running your homes thinking, oh, dad has got no food or dad needs to be looked after for this. If you had to come back and look after me, that would be a bonus. But my intention is to see you being successful, uh, going on well with your families, uh, possibly bringing me some grandchildren before I get too old. <laughs> Looking forward to that. <laughs> Okay, thank you for sharing that. What is it that you do, by the way, uh, for an occupation for people that don't? Oh, my main job. I'm a consulting engineer. I'm a chartered engineer. Jeez. And for some of you there, I know a lot of people say they are chartered, they are engineers. <laughs> but when you check them on the register, engineering council, they're not there. <laughs> You find your old man right there, Bamunda <laughs> Gamkibi, and that's what I do for a living. I design systems, electrical systems. Nice to learn, yes. right? Uh, so this was our what can I call this? A little interview? Yeah. 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 We'll call it that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for your time, and thank you for watching, um, and thank you for those of you who have been watching and supporting, um, showing your love and showing interest in my channel, in my family, in me, in everything that we do. And yeah, so of course, I'm here to give you guys more content, so comment down below what else you guys want to see from me, but this, I guess, I wanted to bring you on here to kind of conclude our little series that we had going on my dad does this my dad does this and I wanted uh, people to just get to know you for you know who you are yeah um, and basically if I go apart from being an engineer I'm also a chef oh yeah he is he's the chef he's the Nyama Choma chief yes yeah I do the cooking like but that is in my free time right so, do you have any last words that you want to say? Um, what I want to say is um, thank you to you, Jan's friends, uh, Facebook, YouTube friends, Twitter, Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> Thanks so much for being there for her. And I'm sure the way I see what's going to happen with Jan, this is going to evolve. As Jason moves on, she's going to be moving with time i'm sure she will become a teacher um, an example uh, i'm sure in about 10 15 years you won't be giving us this kind of um, uh, programs you'll be giving more advanced advice for me the, yes that's the way i see you you'll be evolving with time maybe i could be wrong but that's how that's what i see for the future okay yes all right that's interesting. Nice. Mm -hmm. Let's see a few years down the road whether, you know, your vision, prophecy, don't know what to call it, comes, comes to pass, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for your time. Any closing remarks or no? Um, I love Jan's work and I guess so you do. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for your time guys. Subscribe. Um, of course join the family if you haven't already and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Love you guys!